LLM evaluation has come a long way, similar to how we have come a long way with large language models. However, there are huge problems still existing with evaluation. One is the absence of standard way to evaluate LLM models. And even more, if we have a pipeline, we are struggling to optimize the pipeline for our needs. Even though we have a reference score for, say, classification, or even the blue score for translation, or the root score for summarization, we are now in generative model regime, which are non-deterministic models. And to deal with these generative models, we do need evaluations that are much more robust and cater to our needs. To add to that complexity, every company has its own data and on most occasions they have their own fine-tuned models and these models end up in custom pipelines which are pretty much designed specific for the problem or for the specific customer. So how do we go about addressing this beast of LLM evaluation? When I was looking for a solution, it was when I came across Langwatch. Langwatch is an all-in-one platform to manage your entire LLM-powered application lifecycle. And the product seems to offer LLM evaluations, observability, guardrails, and even optimize your pipeline specific to your needs. And their repository already has 1.3 thousand stars, and it's completely open source and the entire code is available online for free. To put it short, it's a visual interface for DSPy and a complete LLM ops platform for monitoring, experimenting, measuring, and improving your LLM pipelines. So in this video, let's look into the language platform and find out how we can go about using their platform, more specifically, how we can define workflows and how we can go about running evaluations, how we can go about gathering messages like these. Even more importantly, how we can integrate language into your application so that we can do analytics like this. So without further ado, let's get started. So to get started, we go to app.language.ai. So once we hit that, you can see that it's asking us to log in with Google or GitHub or Microsoft account. I'm going to log in with my Google account. If you don't have, you can create one. So once we log in, we land at the analytics page. We don't have anything because we haven't got any messages or threads or users. But what's important is that on the top right, we can see this checklist and we can see that the first project has already been created for us and the first project is named AI Bytes. If we want, we can create a new project, but for now, I'm going to stick with AI Bytes. The next steps are to sync your first message, create your first workflow, set up your first evaluation. If you want, we can also set up alerts. We can create data sets from messages and we can create custom dashboards. So I'm going to walk you through the next step, which is sync your first message. So to get started with messages, we can see the messages on the left side here. So if I click on that, we can see that there's an integration guide for your project. So we can set up our project with Langwatch using the instructions. For example, this Python integration guide here. So if I click on that, we can see that there's a list of steps that we need to follow in order to integrate Langwatch with your project. So your project can be something as simple as a chatbot, or it could be something that involves RAG, and it could be any complicated system. All that we need is the message exchange between your system and a large language model. So if you have that, then you should be able to use language to monitor the exchange of messages. So to get started with language demo, I'm going to create a new Python environment called language demo, and I'm going to activate the environment. I'm going to do pip install language, and we should be all set to use language on the project. So the installation went through fine. I'm going to create a new directory for the project, let's say language demo. And inside the language demo, I'm going to write the code for using an LLM. So inside the language demo directory, I've created a one file app, which is a simple chat app, and I'm using Chainlit for it. It uses the standard functions for chat app. For example, we've got chainlit.on chat start and it's also got chainlit.on message. So this function is going to run whenever we have new messages and when the app starts, this function is going to run. Let's quickly have a look at the user interface. I'm going to launch the app using the command chainlib run app.py. So once it's started, I'm going to open the app and I'm going to say, how are you? We can see that the LLM is responding, indicating that the basic app is now running and we can now go ahead and use language in this app. So to integrate language, 
All that we need to do is that we need to import language and in the main function where we actually do chainlit.onMessage, we need to add this decorator, which is language.trace. So with those two changes, we will notice that whatever the messages that come through to the app, they will be traced in language. I'm going to include those two lines in the app and I'm going to show you how the messages are getting tracked in language. In the imports, I'm first going to import language. And when we come down here on messages, I'm going to do language.trace and we are all set. So with those two changes, we have integrated language with the app. Let's go back to the app and do a conversation and see what happens in language now. What is the French word for today? The French word for today is aujourd'hui. If you have any more questions or need further assistance, feel free to ask. Let's now go to language and see if this message has been tracked. And now we can see this new message has simply appeared, which is that what is the French word for today? Under the trace details, we can see all the messages that are getting passed. And if we look under the evaluations, it clearly says that no evaluation ran for this message set up evaluations. So as time passes and you get more and more messages, this is going to grow and we're going to see a lot of messages here. So we also have the ability to export these messages so that we have a data set with which we can do the rest of the stuff, which is evaluations, or we can build custom workflows. Let's start by creating a workflow. You can see that I've already created a test workflow. Let's now create a AI Bytes workflow. Let's start with a blank template. I'm going to call it AI Bytes workflow if needed we can give a description but i'm not going to do that at the moment and by default we can see that we have an entry we have a llm call and we also have an end basically which gives the output result so in the entry we obviously have a data set by default there's a hello world but we can actually upload or create a data set and we can export the existing data set if you have one so i'm going to start by uploading or creating a data set so i've named it eval data set one and it has got two columns one is the questions one is the gold answers and a preview of the data set is available here i'm just going to save it and we can see all the rows that are available in the data set. It's a small one with only about 80 records. For example, we can see that there's a question called who conducts the draft in which Mark Andre Leary was drafted to the Vegas Gold Knights for the 2017 to 2018 season. And the answer is National Hockey League. We can notice that the gold answer is pretty short in one or two words and we expect the LLM to give the output in a similar fashion too. Now that the entry node is sorted, I'm just going to click on done and we now have an evaluation data set. So this bit is done. Coming to the LLM, we can give instructions here. I'm going to start by giving the instruction. You are a helpful AI assistant. Your job is to give the best answer to questions based on your knowledge. And the input is the question that we get from here. The answer that we get is going to go in the output. So the way that we are going to evaluate this LLM is by using LLM answer match. So the idea of LLM answer match is to use an LLM to judge, to check if the generated output and the expected output are the same. So it has the inputs, the output and the expected output, and it also gets the input. So the input is obviously the question that is there in our data set. So I'm going to give that as the input and the output is the output that is generated from the LLM. So I'm going to give that as the output and the expected output is the gold answer. So if you go back to our entry, we can see that there's only the field question available here. Let's change the data set to the data set that we just uploaded, which is this one. I've changed the data set. Now we can see that we have the gold answer also along with the question. So those are the two columns that are available there. I'm going to give the gold answer as the expected output. I believe our basic workflow is now sorted. We have the data set or the evaluation data set, which consists of the questions and the gold answer. And we have our LLM, which is a GPT 4O mini. And the small instruction that we have given is that you are a helpful assistant. Your job is to give the best answer to questions based on your knowledge. And obviously the output of the LLM is the end result. As the evaluator, we have chosen a LLM 
and some match which is going to use an llm and we can see that by default it comes with gpt 4 o mini we have the option to change the model for example we can change to a cloud 3.7 sonnet or we could change it to a gemini or we could change it to llama mixtral whatever the uh, state-of-the-art models that are available in the market today i'm just going to leave it to the default which is gpt 40 mini for illustrative purposes and that is pretty much our workflow so to check if the workflow is running fine we have to click here and we can see there are two options we either have run with manual input or we have run workflow until here so if i click on run workflow until here we should see a pop-up that comes up that shows an example input for example if i read out the input it's at which university did this american writer lawyer actor and commentator on political and economic issues who appeared in the 1993 comedy drama film me and the kid get a law degree the expected output is Yale law school and the output that's generated from the llm is this big detailed answer in the end which says law degree from Yale law school but the gpt 4 mini model has passed it because there is answer a law school which is the expected output in the output even though there's a detailed answer here so that is how the llm answer match works now that we have tested that the workflow works fine we can go to the top right and click on evaluate we can see that we can give a version number and a description because i've already run the evaluation it's already there saying that what i've done we can now choose whether we want to run on the full data set or on the test entries which usually is 20 percent of the evaluation set or if we choose to we can run on the training set which people normally don't so i'm going to run on the test entries and i'm going to click on run evaluate so we can see that the LLM answer match has run and the pass percentage is just 23.5%. So the power of the language platform comes with the optimization feature. So now what we have to do is optimize this workflow. So this is the version exactly matching the evaluation version that we evaluated, which is 1.13. So if I click on optimize, it's the same version and for the optimizer i can choose to optimize the prompt only or i can do a prompt plus demonstration which is going to include some few shots from your data set or we can do other ones which is just to optimize the demonstrations only which is going to just change the few shot examples and not change the prompt i'm going to do prompt only and for the teacher llm i'm just going to leave it to gpt 40 mini again we can see that there is plenty of options available here for the model it could be a claude it could be Gemini or it could be Llama. It could even be DeepSeek. I'm just going to leave it with GPT-40 mini here and I'm just going to run optimization. So this optimization is obviously going to take a while because as we can see here, it says it can take up to five minutes for the first steps to arrive. So hopefully we'll get an optimized version of the workflow. And now the optimization is complete. We can see that it has run so many iterations and we started somewhere at around 29.41 and the best one we got is 35.29 so there is improvement in the workflow because of the optimization step and we can see that at every stage the prompt or the instruction is quite different for example if we take this we can see that the instruction is you are an ai trivia expert your task is to accurately answer comparative trivia questions by providing detailed responses that include relevant facts dates and context ensure that your answer not only state which option is correct but also explain why using clear reasoning and precise information to enhance understanding and if we look at another prompt we can see that the instruction is again quite different the instruction is please answer the trivia question by providing a clear and concise response ensuring to include relevant comparisons or facts that support your answer so once we are happy with the optimization we can choose which one we want to and we can apply optimization so if we apply the optimization to the workflow then we can see that the instruction has been updated in the workflow and one of the last steps after optimization is obviously publishing so if you click on publish you can click on publish current version and we can see that the current version is 1.13 which we just optimized so we can click on 
publish and the workflow will be made available via API as a component to other workflows or as a custom evaluator. So that brings us to the end of the review of the language platform. I hope to see you guys in my next video. Until then, take care.